Hi, I'm Camille from Camille's Doll Spa, and today I want to show you how to take the eyes out of a Bitty Baby doll, and we are going to repaint them because they have silvered, and then we're going to put them back in. Here are my three Bitty Baby dolls. These three Bitty Baby dolls all have some degree of silver eye. These are actually the very old Our New Baby dolls. Let me zoom on the, in on this so you can see the silver eye. Yep, that one's got the silver eye around the edges. And this one's got it really bad. And this one, you see the bubble on the right hand side? That's called bubble eye. And it's a type of silver eye. The paint is coming out of the inside of the eye. So that's where we come in to repaint the inside of all of these dolls' eyes. But first we're gonna have to take them out. So I have here my fancy tool that I made out of a dowel rod wrapped with some towels and a rubber band at the other end, some needle nose tweezers, a small Pyrex bowl lined with a dish towel, and of course I'm boiling my kettle of water right now. I'm going to wait till the water is boiling and then we should use it right away. Okay, so as you can hear, the tea kettle is now boiling, so we're going to turn it off. The very next thing we're going to do right away, because you can't let the water cool down, otherwise it won't be effective in softening the doll's head. We are going to pour the water into this bitty baby's head. Oops, I found something inside. Hmm, wonder what that is. Interesting. Good thing I had my tweezers. You never know what you're going to find. It's a post-it note. Hmm. It says brand new in box. Nothing like a little pressure, right? Okay, so anyway, as we were, we're going to pour the water very carefully into the head, all the way up to the neck. All right, and immediately, I will set my timer for two minutes. It's very important to go two minutes, not more, not less. If you go more, you're going to end up melting the eyes because the head will become too hot. If you go less, the vinyl will not be soft enough to pop the eyes out. So that two minute mark is key. So while we're waiting, maybe we'll discuss all the pressure that it takes to make one of these little videos for you guys. Do you know how it is to be a mom working in a kitchen? Is your kitchen ever spotless like this? No? Okay, well, so mine isn't either, so I just kind of piled everything up on my table where you can't see it, and now we have a clean space. So don't be fooled. This is how it usually goes. It's always a mess. Um, my hair never looks good. It, there's always some sort of obstacle to getting a video done. So um, here we are. So the timer has gone off. So what we need to do is go over to the sink with this head and real carefully pour it out. Don't get any boiling water on yourself. This is after the two minute mark, right after the two minute mark. Okay, so our two minutes are up. We have to get these eyes out. So this is how I'm gonna use my tool. I'm gonna brace it against my leg and insert it into the doll's head. I'm gonna find that center point on the back of the eye and push really gently, catch that eye with my finger as it comes out. You got maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds to get this done before the eye starts to become hard again in the socket, um, so it's important to work quickly. You also want to be sure you find that center point because you don't want the eye to end up crooked or not coming out properly. See, that wasn't so bad. A bitty baby eye is just like a regular American Girl doll eye, only smaller. It's composed of three parts. This plastic back, the eyeball, and a metal ring. So here's what we have going on with the silver eye. You see how the front, it appears silver, but that's not actually what's happening here, guys. What's happening is the eye is painted from the back, and the reason it looks silver is because the paint actually is coming off the back and it's leaving a little gap. So let me show you how the back of this looks. Get a good grip on it. Okay, so you see the eyelash is glued in, and you see the weight back there, and then you see all that paint. So the task is to get the paint out some way. 
What I like to do to get the paint out is to use a hair dryer on a warm setting, point it at the eye for maybe a minute or so, just to make the paint a little bit more gummy so that it pulls out of the eye easily instead of having to scrape it out or get it out with a solvent or something more destructive like that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, hope you're enjoying my daughter's piano lessons in the background. The next thing we're going to do is use the hair dryer to take that old paint out. We're actually going to loosen the paint, not take it out this way. We're going to loosen it by heating it up a little bit on low. I might mention that there's a sweet spot here because you don't want to do damage to the eyelashes. You get it too hot, you're going to melt the eyelashes. So then we're going to go in here with the tweezers really carefully and find a spot of paint around the edges. Stick around the edges so you don't scratch anything. Oh, this looks like it's going to be a hard one. And there's all kinds of glue down in the bottom too. That's okay. This is what happens, and this is why people pay me to do it rather than try to do it themselves because it's hard. You can hear a little pop in there, and you know that you're getting it loose. You want to try not to scratch the inside surface of the eye and just grab the paint only with your tweezers. If possible, this takes a lot of patience. It's time consuming, but look, we're going to be rewarded for our patience when this all comes out, hopefully, in one nice clump, just like that. Amazing, huh? Okay, well, I didn't get it all out. I still have the center of the eye to get out, so we'll work on that a little bit more. But you get the idea. It's very important to just pull on the paint only and not scratch the eye in the process. So we're going to try to get that last little bit out. If that doesn't work, we can resort to the use of solvents, but usually it does, especially for an eye that's this much silvered. It already wants to come out pretty badly. <sighs> Some people might say, you can leave that center part in, but I have found that that doesn't work. I found that the new paint seeps in inside of the old center of the eye. So best to take it all out, start from scratch. You may have to warm it up again. Our new baby, Bitty Baby dolls, this is what they were called before they were called Bitty Baby, what were um, produced at the very beginning, and uh, many of those um, styles of doll are no longer sold. Um, the combinations and um, the eyelashes are nice and soft on these dolls. What's not to love? Okay, so the solvent of choice is brush cleaner. This one's by Winsor & Newton for dried acrylic and oil color. I have poured out a little bit into my Pyrex dish and I have two old paint brushes for applying the solvent. You don't want to get any of this stuff on, for example, your kitchen table like I might have in the past because it really is good at taking off finishes. Um, so here I'm just going to, with my old paintbrush, apply the solvent carefully into only the center of the eye 
and I'm going to wipe off as I go. Until all that paint is gone. And be careful not to get any of this on the outside of the eye as it will take off the paint from your eyelid as well. Here, we're finally getting somewhere now as it's dissolving that paint. Okay, so like half an hour later and a couple solvents later, we have finally got this eye completely cleaned out of all the old paint. Um, so the brush cleaner kind of worked, but it wasn't doing as good of a job. So I moved on to acetone, which I don't like because it's dangerous because it can make the plastic surface um, of the eye ruined really quickly if you get it anywhere. Um, I tried that and it was just okay and I moved to Goof Off, which worked a lot better um, in this case. I would have really liked it if the paint would have just come right out of the center, but I wanted to avoid scraping anything um, on that surface with my tool. So solvent, unfortunately, in this case was the way to go. And you can see all the little dots here on my piece of paper towel where I cleaned off paint from my brushes as I went. So the next step is to do the other one and I'll get back to you. Hey guys, I have my two eyes completely cleaned. I have used solvent to remove those last traces of paint inside the eye so that I don't know if I can get much closer than this. There we go. You can see <clears throat> how very clean it is. Under a magnifying glass, maybe you might still see a particle or two, but I've been very careful to get all of the old paint out. Then I rinsed it with water, and then I, with one more um, swipe with the brush cleaner on the section that I had cleaned, because that's better than water for getting the new paint to adhere. So what I have here is plain old black acrylic paint, undiluted. What I'm going to do is take my super small, not the smallest brush I have, but a pretty small brush. I'm going to take my pretty small brush and get a big glop of paint on the end, and I'm going to stick it right in that center. I'm going to continue and get another big glop of paint and stick it right in the center. What happens is you're going to end up with a pool, a little pool in there, and you can manipulate that pool to be exactly the right dimensions of the pupil of the eye. Keep going. If you get some around the edges, it's okay because we have our little bowl of brush cleaner and we're going to go around and do fine cleanup before the very end. The most important part is to get it in that circle. You can see that I'm going to need to do some fine cleanup. I'm having trouble getting my lens to focus exactly on what I'm doing here. But you can see there's going to be some fine cleanup work involved, but that's the gist of what's going to happen. And if I turn it around, you can see the pupil is beginning to take shape. Okay, now I'm going to go in and do some fine cleanup work with my brush cleaner. So we have the eye pupil painted, but see there are some spots that we could do some cleanup. So I'm going to go in with this little tiny paintbrush. Come on, focus. There we go. And I'm going to do fine cleanup with a teeny tiny paintbrush. I like this paintbrush better, actually. You want it to be a stiff, short paintbrush that you can control where those bristles are actually going. You want to just float that paint very carefully off the top surface so you don't end up going back and forth, doing it again, and then fine clean up again. Do it right the first time. You want to do your brush strokes towards the middle of the eye. Now, I did save the old paint. I always save it in a Ziploc bag. I do that for color matching purposes so that I can try to get in it as an exact of a match as I can. I also paint both eyes just to ensure that perfect match between the two eyes. Okay, so here I have my eye that's been repainted as far as the pupil goes, the black part in the middle, and we are going to do the brown iris. I have mixed 
some paint together. This is plain old acrylic paint and the darker color is the one I'm going to use and I use my old paint as a color reference for that. So this is actually the easy part of the whole thing. We're just going to grab a lot of this undiluted paint and put gobs of it into that center circle of the eye. You have to do this when the uh, middle paint, the pupil, is completely dry. Otherwise, it will mix together. That's not what you want. So what I like to do is keep my hair dryer handy because you're probably not going to be able to get all your paint in at once. You want to dry little coats in between until you get full coverage. So here we go with the hair dryer. Okay, good enough. Good enough just so that the surface is mostly dry. And we're going to load some more paint in there. The idea is to get a huge glop of it just in the middle circle, not anywhere else, not on the eyelashes, not on the weight. So that's what makes it tedious, if anything, is getting the paint in the exact right place. And you're going to paint up on the edges of the circle too, because that part actually also reflects into the front of the eye. It helps to hold this up to a light and check and see if you see any light shining through. That's how you'll know whether you've done a good job or not. See how the inside is completely covered and I'm not quite done yet. All the way around all the edges of the inside. I'm going to show you what it looks like from the front. Can you see it up against the light? All right, I'm back today to put the eyes back into the Bitty Baby doll that we had repainted because they had silvered. I've let the paint dry overnight and I varnished it with Liquitex high gloss varnish and let that dry really well. I'll show you in a second how they look and I have my kettle boiling and as soon as that boils we'll be ready to put the eyes back in. All right, the kettle's boiling, so we're going to turn that off. And I have my bitty baby head upside down in a Pyrex bowl lined with a paper towel, with a, sorry, not a paper towel, a dish towel. And I'm going to take my just boiled water and fill the head just as we did before. And I'm going to immediately set my timer for two minutes exactly. Okay, I'm going to show you how those eyes turned out. This is how it looks from the back, all varnished and protected. Ready to go. Okay, so my timer's going off. I'll be right back. I'm going to go dump this. Okay, here we are, ready to put the eyes in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is keep my tweezers and my tool nearby just in case. I'm going to put the eyes in at an angle. This protects the eyelashes from getting bent and just really helps things to go smoothly. You want to be thinking with your fingertips as you do this. So in other words, feeling for the metal parts because you don't want the eye to end up too crooked um, because lashes could get bent really easily. Here, we're going to do the second one. Okay. And we're going to push probably more on the top and push more towards the back. This is really easy to do because the vinyl is very soft because this is one of the oldest bitty babies. This is one of the Arnu babies with the really soft vinyl heads. So totally an easy eye swap. No hard plastic here. The only thing that we're going to have to manage is this this doll was a little bit smushed when I got a hold of him and we're going to have to manage this shape as the vinyl is cooling. So in addition to setting the eyes in properly, which I'm going to show you, we're going to have to push on the head a little bit here and there so that it doesn't end up with that smushy shape that it had. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is show you how to go in 
and just back and forth with those eyeballs without scratching the lids, without scratching the eye. You just want to be touching the metal part, that metal o-ring only as you go back and forth, wiggle, 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 just a little bit here and there to get that eye centered so that when it closes, you want it to be even straight across like that instead of kind of cockeyed. And then when you open it, you want the doll to have a nice gaze that really seems like it focuses on you. So not too bad. Baby's all back together. We want to store the doll's head upside down for a couple of reasons. After it is cooled sufficiently to where I'm happy with the shape because I'm going to push on it a little bit until it's pretty solid. And then I'm going to leave it in this bowl upside down so that all the water can evaporate out of the inside of it and the eye sockets won't dry in some sort of deformed way that prevents the eyes from closing properly. And then all we have to do is put the baby's head back on the body and tie the string and you're good to go.